San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, police say a woman is sent to the hospital after she was stabbed in the chest during a fight. We will have the latest on her condition. A grim warning expected this morning on Capitol Hill from a government scientist. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking you outside with live cam. Boy, uh, radar is lit up this morning. Mike is standing by with details. And good morning to you, everyone. It is Thursday, May 14th. Thanks for being with us this morning. So I just glanced at radar, Mike, and I was like, what is happening? But you said it's not severe weather. There were some uh, severe cells earlier this morning. There was one in northern uh, Uvalde County that kind of died off. Heavy rain's the biggest deal with this. So we do have some uh, flooding issues going on uh, around the area. Nothing in Bear County right now. And you can see there's plenty of uh, lightning associated with this as well. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if maybe a flood advisory is issued for uh, Bear County in the next a couple of minutes. Now, if you look at radar and this was event initially, I should say kind of sliding more southeastwardly, but now it has taken a little bit of a turn. It looks like it's moving straight to the east. And so we are getting some of those uh, heavier downpours here in town. Plenty of cloud to ground lightning as well. And that's the extent of it. Like I said, there's nothing severe, although there is the flood advisory, nothing for to mention Bear County, but for uh, good portion of Medina and Uvalde counties up until seven o'clock this morning. And then this northern portion of it, Bandera, Kerr, uh, Kerrville and Lakey, parts of uh, Real County and back out to the west. That's in effect up until 515. So for the next 45 minutes, um, seen the problem. Also, we've seen some very heavy downpour downpours, rainfall rates of about two, three inches per hour. That doesn't mean you'll get that much, but that's how how heavy it's coming down. And the other problem is, should this hit northern parts of Bear County and especially Kamal County on top of what you already had a couple of days ago? We're going to have to watch out for maybe some minor flooding up there to the north. Temperatures, we've got a little bit of rain cooled air. Temperatures dropped out about five degrees with some of that rain moving through. Molds on the high side, it's going to be st staying on the high side, my guess is, just because of the forecast around here. So we'll have the rain this morning. It's going to move off to the east and southeast. And then 80 at noon, 90 for a high temperature. A stray shower off to the east is possible today, but not very likely, kind of like what we had yesterday. We're still looking at heavy rain to start off the weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Any problems from the wet roads yet? Yeah, Mike, we're already starting to see the results of those storms. Uh, three major accidents right now with another one here. I wasn't able to get a graphic on, but we'll start here. Uh, this is going to be southbound West Loop 1604 North at Braun Road or in between Braun Road and Bandera. That's a one vehicle accident there, but still uh, major. Then we have this one northbound I-10 West at Hebner Road working on this one. This one's about 10 minutes. Another one vehicle accident. Uh, looks like a vehicle hit the guardrail there. So everyone just please be careful. Very wet out there. Watch your speed, please. Uh, we have this accident eastbound US Highway 90 West at Frio City Road. And the accident I wasn't able to get is 410 at Medina Base Road. Um, so a couple a lot of accidents out there right now. Just please be careful. Taking a look at the trans guide 10 West and 1604. You can see how wet it is there. 10 at La Cantera, the same. Um, not too much traffic, though. And uh, 10 at Ralph Fair looking very light. All right, Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, a woman was stabbed in the chest on the south side last night. This happened on West Dixon Street near Southwest Military. Our South, uh, Sarah Costa, rather, is live from home with what led up to this. Sarah? Well, it was a, an argument that fueled this fight that led one woman with a stab woman to a stab, um, excuse me, a stab wound to the chest. Police say this happened at 930 last night. That's when they got the call to the city south side in the 200 block of West Dixon Avenue near Southwest Military and South Florida Street. The sergeant on scene says two women were in their 40s were arguing when one of them, one of the women pulled a knife out and stabbed the other in the chest. Police say the injured woman was taken to University Hospital in stable condition with the chab with the stab wound to her chest. The woman who stabbed the victim was detained by police. Now, police did not say if that woman who they have in custody will face any charges. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Today, Metro Health will have two new pop-up testing sites. Now, remember, you can get tested even if you're not showing any symptoms. The new locations are the Southside Lions Community Center and the Claude Black Community Center. The sites will be open Till 2 p from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's free to get tested and no appointment is required. 
Well, money is obviously a major concern amid the pandemic, and when it comes to the CARES Act, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says our county, along with the 10 other largest counties in Texas, are questioning the distribution of funds from the state. In a letter to the governor, the group of judges said that the 11 regions, including Bear County, have a majority of all COVID-19 cases in Texas. Judge Wolf says about $11.24 billion was allocated to the state. But when it comes to dividing that money up, Bear County and 10 of the other counties say they only received 28.6% of that amount. That's despite having more than 68% of all COVID-19 cases in Texas. Let's take a look at the latest numbers right now. There are 1,976 total cases of COVID-19. Of those, more than 1,000 have recovered. 58 people have died. And there are more than 860 active cases with 67 of those patients needing to be in the hospital. A grim prediction this morning from the go government scientist Rick Bright filed a whistleblower complaint after he was ousted from leading the effort to develop a coronavirus vaccine. Bright will appear before lawmakers this morning as the battle over when and how to reopen continues. ABC's Inez de la Cuatera is in Washington with the latest. In prepared testimony obtained by ABC News, Dr. Rick Bright is expected to tell lawmakers today that the country faces unprecedented illness and fatalities without additional preparation, adding, without clear planning and implementation of the steps that I and other experts have outlined, 2020 will be the darkest winter in modern history. Bright recently oversaw production of a coronavirus vaccine, but claimed he was demoted after recommending against the use of a malaria drug pushed by President Trump as a possible cure to COVID-19. I was pressured to let politics and cronyism drive decisions over the opinions of the best scientists we have. The Department of Health and Human Services responding it strongly disagrees with the allegations and characterizations in the complaint from Dr. Bright. Bright's testimony comes as the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, warned lawmakers earlier this week about a possible second wave if states and schools reopen too quickly. There is a real risk that you will trigger an outbreak that you may not be able to control. Those comments at odds with the president. To me, it's not an acceptable answer, especially when it comes to schools. Well, I think they should open the schools, absolutely. This, as new CDC guidelines meant to help businesses and communities reopen, are reportedly being blocked by the White House, saying they're too restrictive. In Wisconsin, the state Supreme Court now striking down the governor's stay-at-home order, finding it unlawful. In California, beaches are back open in Los Angeles County, but with restrictions. An internal White House document reportedly shows new cases spiking in Nashville and Des Moines Central City, while Kentucky reports a massive increase as of May 7th. In Esdale Equitera, ABC News, Washington. 438, 65 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, as we close out this academic year, many colleges and universities are already looking towards the fall. More on why some are reopening to students while others are not. Plus, newly released dash cam videos so it show a close call when an 18 wheeler nearly crashes into some Texas police officers working an accident scene. And taking you outside with live cam, we do have rain in the area. You can tell by the droplets on the camera, but Mike's tracking it for you and he'll have an update. And there's a look at radar right now as those showers and storms work their way through the heart of the KSAT 12 viewing area, including downtown San Antonio. We'll be right back. In your morning headlines, the stock market will try to rebound today. After all, major indices finished lower. The Dow had its worst day since the start of the month, falling more than 500 points. After Federal Reserve Chairman said the, there continues to be a significant risk in the economy, he says the unemployment rate will likely peak over the next month before declining. The Nasdaq was down nearly 140 points. The S&P 500 down by 50. A new study has found that COVID-19 tests being used by the White House frequently misses cases of the virus. The White House uses the Abbott ID Now test. It can show results in just 13 minutes, but New York University researchers found the test to be, quote, unacceptable for use with patients. They looked at nasal swabs from 101 patients who came in for testing. Another diagnostic test found that 31 of them had COVID-19, and of those positive swabs, 48 percent were negative with the Abbott test. Abbott has disputed the finding, saying it is inconsistent with other studies. The Food and Drug Administration, which authorized the test in March, is investigating.
Well, a close call up in Belton near Waco when a semi spun out of control during recent rainy weather. Check out this dash cam video showing officers working a, working a crash scene involving another truck Tuesday. But then the 18 wheeler goes over a highway median and crashes. The officers were able to get out of the way moments before the truck barrels through the scene. Big rig came to a stop on the side of I-35. Police say they're happy no one was seriously hurt. It's also a reminder drivers should watch their speed, especially during adverse weather conditions like we're seeing out there right now. 442, 65 degrees. Still ahead, the series finale of How to Get Away with Murder airs tonight on ABC. We're going to have a preview and thoughts from the actors about the long-running drama series. Air fryers have been a popular item in the kitchen lately, but uh, if you don't have one, what if you don't have one? Up next, we'll show you, have some ways you can still enjoy some air fried meals. In this morning's GMA First Look, the battle over when to open schools and colleges. What are you seeing that these other academic leaders are not? Well, I don't know that we're seeing anything differently than they are. Uh, I think it's a matter of risk reward. GMA getting an inside look at the University of Arizona in Tucson, which plans to reopen this fall. The school's plan is called Test Trace Treat. They've even started to convert this dorm building into an isolation center. Students who are sick will get a room to themselves, food delivered, and treated by telemedicine on their computers. We don't want to have to send them to the, the hospital if they don't need to be. But in California, a different story with some state university campuses there remaining closed through the fall semester. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live interview with Cal State Chancellor Dr. Timothy White. With your GMA First Look, I'm Tom Yamas, ABC News, Tucson. Well, air fryers have become very popular recently. People love the idea of crispy fried food that use very little oil. But what if you don't have one? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says you may be able to air fry without one. So what's the deal with air fryers? These popular little cookers turn out chicken wings, fries, shrimp, and more without using a lot of oil. You can spend from 50 to more than $300 for one. But you don't have to because air frying isn't magic. An air fryer is a mini convection oven. All you need is a little bit of oil in the food and then the hot air circulates around to crisp it up. A basket suspended inside allows for that air to move around. And that basket might be too small. Consumer Reports tested 25 air fryers and found many of them require several batches to feed the family. But good news, your kitchen may already have the power for air fried food, the convection setting on your oven. Your food will brown best if you use dark colored pans because it absorbs more heat than light colored or glass pans. And then that heat will radiate back out to brown your food even more. And your oven can handle a large quantity. If you don't have a convection oven, a toaster oven with a convection setting will work. Some newer models even have an air fry setting so you can get the same crispy results. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We have a lot of water on the roads in places right now this morning. And that could cause problems for your community this morning. How's it looking out there, Nick? Another major accident, Leslie. This one's going to be southbound Highway 151 uh, near North Hunt Lane in Petrenko. It's another one vehicle accident that hit the guardrail. Everyone just please be careful out there. Control your speed. Go the speed limit. Put your seatbelt on. It's a little bit dangerous out there this morning. All right, we're still working on this accident. Southbound West Loop 1604 at Brun and this accident Northwest of there, northbound I-10 West at Hebner Road. Uh, let's take a look outside at the roadways. 10 at UTSA. Very slick there. Um, these accidents aren't causing too much traffic buildup because the traffic's light, which is good news. 35 in South Pedro's looking good. Leon Creek in 90 looking great. And uh, don't forget we have some uh, construction on Medeo in 90. And uh, 35 in Salado Creek looking good. Look at this picture right behind Nick. And I, oh, we just changed. Darn. It was right in the uh, one of the street lights. And it was just coming down. Yeah, it really is. And this is the kind of morning where you're driving along and then all of a sudden you've got a lake. Yeah, and part yeah. of the interstate on the side. You hit and it full speed. I was so surprised because I didn't see a drop on my way in. I mean, you, I just missed it. You made it in right before it all moved on in here. And that's the problem because this is coming down in buckets, basically. I mean, the, the downpours are extremely heavy. And uh, this is looking west by the airport. And obviously, 410 is wet. A lot of cloud to ground lightning associated with this as well. You saw right back there in the distance. Perfect timing on that one. Here's what it looks like on radar. And this is, there's nothing, first of all, severe with this. Now, earlier, 
earlier this morning, a couple of hours ago, out in uh, northern Uvalde County, there was a one small cell that was producing some quarter-sized hail. That uh, actually, that uh, severe thunderstorm warning was uh, canceled before it was allowed to expire. That was about 3:30 this morning. So this continues to work its way to the east. If I set off the top of the show, it looked like it was moving kind of more southeastwardly, and now it's making the turn. So it's covering basically all of San Antonio and Bear County, and still some very heavy downpours. Not we're not seeing anything as far as any uh, lightning or excuse me, any hail at all with this, but still obviously plenty of lightning. And as far as the rainfall rates, now this doesn't mean you'll get this much rain, but it's coming down in buckets, two and a half inches per hour. These are some of the estimates from radar right now, about an inch and a half per hour just on the uh, north side right up there by about 410 near the airport, 281 and almost two inches per hour out there in parts of Medina County. Now we do have Flood advisory in effect up until 7 o'clock for a good chunk of Medina County as well as Uvalde County. And then from Kerr, uh, Bandera, and back out to the west, including southern Real and portions of Edwards County, there's the flood advisory in effect for the next uh, about half hour up until 515. And that's because we've seen two, three inch rain amounts associated with this as it moved on through. And like we were just talking about with this coming down so hard and heavy, ponding is going to be a big problem with this this morning. 65 degrees, so we've got some rain cooled air because we we're just at 70. I think at the top of the show right around Stinson, so that rain has come in here, knocked temperatures down uh, just a little bit. We still have plenty of humidity out there, and that's what's helping to feed some of these showers and thunderstorms. So yesterday, if you recall, we were talking about how there was the chance for Potentially some severe storms to pop up out there way out to the west around Valverde County in the Rio Grande Valley. And yes, they did pop up and we mentioned about how maybe it's going to get turned into one of these nighttime storm complexes. Well, that actually happened. Two of them, one took off down at the south and this one just held together and worked its way on through the hill country and will continue to work its way off to the east. So east of San Antonio, you can expect some more of that rain. And then by the time the sun comes up, it's going to start to die down. Now, as we jump ahead in time, we'll have a couple of scattered showers today. I'm going to get to this and then tomorrow in the evening hours. That's when we're going to start to see that line of very heavy rain moving on in here. And there could be a good chance for some flooding potential as well as potentially some uh, severe storms late tomorrow night as that moves on through. And that's going to work its way through through the first half of the day on uh, through the first half of the day on Saturday. 80 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies and then 88 for a high temperature today. A shower is possible tomorrow. Rain's going to pick up in the afternoon and tomorrow night, especially in heavy rain on Saturday. will finally clear out in the middle of next week. And we'll be back. Tonight, we say goodbye to how to get away with murder. Oh, man, I'm more emotional than I thought I would be. The ABC drama changed Viola Davis's life, scoring her a lead actress Emmy for playing Annalise Keating. And she promises the finale will leave fans satisfied and happy. Everything you could possibly want in your character was in that episode. It was like a beautiful aria that ends on the most beautiful high note. The series finale of How to Get Away with Murder airs tonight on ABC. I got an interview with Roland Pollard. <laughs> Looks like Woody Allen has the top movie in the world because there isn't much competition. With theaters in most countries still closed, his film A Rainy Day in New York opened in South Korea to almost $340,000, easily enough to top the box office, according to Box Office Mojo. The only other movie reporting earnings was Pixar's Onward in Norway, which took in $17,000. A Rainy Day in New York was shelved by Amazon in the U.S. amid renewed allegations of sexual assault by Allen, allegations he denies. The Michael Jackson Broadway musical beating it to next year. MJ was supposed to open this summer, but with Broadway now closed until at least September 6th, that can't happen. And a couple of big name directors with birthdays today, Star Wars creator George Lucas is 76, while Sofia Coppola is 49. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Four minutes till 65 degrees. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, there's some new coronavirus procedures going on at the Bear County Jail. More on why the test for the virus is being done by the inmates themselves. Well, it's only been available for a select few recently, but now Amazon is opening its online grocery store back up to more customers. That and an update on the weather still ahead. Live from Chase at 12. 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And we will get to the rough weather in a moment. But first, making headlines this morning, fire erupts at a mobile home in Northeast Bear County overnight. What fire investigators are saying about a possible cause. Plus, a look at why inmates at the Bear County Jail are doing their own coronavirus testing. And outside with live cam, heavy rain here in the downtown area earlier. We've got ponding of water on roadways. Big storms moving through the area right now. Mike Ostrich will get us updated in just a second. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, the 14th of May. Let's get right to Mike and talk about those storms that he's tracking. Yeah, and just um, kind of reading the details on it, but a, a flood advisor is just issued for uh, Bear County up until 8 o'clock. And some of the, it doesn't give an estimate, but uh, rain obviously has been coming down in buckets out there this morning. Temperature has uh, cooled down a little bit uh, thanks to the rain cool air that moved on in. We were at about 70 now, uh, mid 60s, uh, 64 up the road in Rock Springs. And we've got a wind out of the uh, west to southwest as of right now. Here's what it looks like on radar. And yeah, these are just some big old heavy thunderstorms and a lot of very heavy rain. There is nothing severe about these storms. They had as it moved through uh, northern that little cell right going back on the loop right there that did uh, become severe. There was a severe thunderstorm warning earlier this morning because of some uh, large hail, but then that was canceled before it was allowed to expire because that storm that storm sort of weakened. And if you look at the loop on here, yes, the storms are definitely kind of weakening as far as the the intensity of them. There's not as much red, the deep red showing up, but yeah, it's still coming down in buckets out there and a lot of times on live cam and on some of the trans guide cameras, plenty of lightning flashes out there. Now you want to watch it up to the uh, north in Kamau County where he had all that rain just a couple of days ago. So this is going to kind of add insult to injury and it's coming down uh, in buckets. So a lot of pounding on the on the roads this morning. So you definitely want to take a lot of runoff. We're going to be kicking up rooster tails, everything else. And this continues to work its way off to the east. So folks around uh, Lavernia, Gonzales, um, to over towards Seguin, Floresville, you're going to be seeing some of this rain. Now the system, as they usually do, is going to be sort of uh, dying down as the sun starts to uh, come up. It, it was born out there in the western portion of the hill country around Valverde County late last night. They usually just exist through about sunrise. So there's the uh, flood advisory for Bear County up until 8 o'clock this morning till 7 o'clock for Medina County and parts of Uvalde. And then this flood advisory up in the hill country, Kerr, Bandera and parts of Real County, that's going to expire in just about 15 minutes. Now mold is on the high side. That's going to be staying high the next couple of days just because of all this moisture out there. Storms, the heavy rain will continue to move to the east and southeast. Mostly cloudy, 90 today. It's going to be hot and humid. A stray shower is possible, not very likely, primarily off to the east. Now, tomorrow we'll see thunderstorms redevelop, especially late in the afternoon and tomorrow night, mid 80s. And then overnight into Saturday, that's when we're looking at some potentially heavy rain around here. And flooding is definitely going to be a threat on Saturday. More on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis, and you still got a slew of accidents, right? Yeah, a lot of them right now, Mike. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of green on the screen because traffic is light, but there's a lot of accidents out there, and it is very dangerous on the roadways. Please watch your speed. We want you to get into work safely. Okay, another accident here. This is going to be eastbound North Loop 16. 1904 West at Blanco Road. Another one vehicle accident. This vehicle is actually on the grassy median there between Blanco and uh, Hebner. Uh, that's also facing the wrong way. So just keep that in mind if you're heading um, that direction. We have this accident just came out 35 uh, Southwest uh, Loop 410 um, and 35 near the Toyota plant. Uh, it's right there. I think it's another one vehicle accident, but still very dangerous if you're heading that way as well. This accident westbound Northeast Northeast Loop 410 at IH 35 North. This is on the northeast side of town near uh, Cowboys Dance Hall. Another one vehicle accident there. And uh, we have this accident, US, southbound U.S. Highway 151 at North Hunt Lane. That one's been active for about 20 minutes or so. Well, you got to say, there it is, 35 in Nogalitos. I uh, just saw that one right there, so I'll try to get more information on that. 35 in Martin, the same. And uh, 10 West at Loop 1604. Rain's coming down hard there, but not that much traffic. But uh, like I said, I had to say, remember, turn around, don't drown. Even up to two inches of water can move your vehicle. If you have to think about it, it's probably not worth it. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Good advice. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, fire investigators are looking into what caused a fire at a mobile home in northeast Bear County overnight. It happened in the 4600 block of Walsam Road around 1030. Firefighters arrived to find the abandoned trailer fully engulfed. This is at the Jasper Mobile Home Park. They don't have a cause, but they do tell us the fire looks suspicious. There are no reports of injuries.
Now to an Amber Alert. The Van Zant County Sheriff's Office looking for a 14 year old girl they believe could be in grave or immediate danger. Willow Searmans is described as being white, three feet tall, 75 pounds with strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes. Police believe they may have she may have been abducted by Austin Walker is being described as being white, 5'9", uh, about 140 pounds, has a tattoo and scar on his right arm. Walker last seen, uh, last heard from in Grand Saline. Anyone with information can call the Van Zant County Sheriff's Office. Well, the city is opening two more walk-up COVID-19 testing sites today. The sites will be open today through Saturday. Sarah Acosta live from home with more on that story. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Leslie. Well, the good news is, is you don't need an appointment to walk up to these new testing sites for COVID-19, and they are also free. These two sites are going to be located, one on the east side and one on the city's south side. Well, southeast side. The first site is at the South Side Lions Community Center in the 3100 block of Hiawatha Street. And the second new free site is at Claude Black Community Center. That's in the 2800 block of East Commerce. Testing will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. through starting today through Saturday. There is a limit of 150 people that can be tested at each site per day. In addition to these sites, the state agencies have also added more mobile COVID-19 test locations for residents at no cost. These locations do require an appointment. Of course, you can go to ksat.com right now and find out all the information you need about these mobile testing sites and the two new sites that are starting today in the city. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Texas prison officials have started sending specialized coronavirus strike teams throughout the prison system. The team's missions are to test every inmate for the virus. As Paul Venema reports, the actual testing is done by the inmates themselves. These self-administered tests began on Tuesday, and according to prison officials, over 1,400 tests were given within the first three hours. Under the direction of the strike team members, each inmate swabs their cheeks and mouth. Once the tests are submitted, it takes from 24 to 48 hours to get the results. According to TDCJ, clinical studies suggest that these tests have the equivalent sensitivity to nasal swabs. The testing is part of the prison system's aggressive approach to fighting COVID-19. Another element, a lockdown. The point of the lockdown is to limit as much offender movement as possible within the units. According to recent numbers from the department, over 43,000 inmates are in lockdown throughout the system. A complete lockdown is being instituted on any facility where there is a positive COVID-19 test for either an offender or an employee or staff member who has been on that unit. The lockdown numbers are in addition to existing medical restriction and medical isolation numbers that represent the prison system's efforts in the battle against COVID-19. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. 507, 65 degrees. Still ahead, ride sharing company Uber is trying to take an extra step to ensure passengers' safety. More on how the company is using face recognition technology to enforce COVID 19 rules. And McDonald's bringing back its popular free fries Friday deal. We'll tell you how you can get some. Yummy fries that are free? Mother Nature's putting on a little show for us this morning. We're tracking storms still to come. Welcome back. Your time now, 511. In your morning consumer headlines, despite financial woes, JCPenney executives are getting lots of dollars. The department store chain is dealing with missed debt payments and could be facing possible bankruptcy filings. However, its top four executives will get bonuses of at least $1 million. Officials say the bonuses are needed to prevent the top talent from jumping ship. JCPenney, like many other retailers, are struggling due to the COVID-19 pandemic. McDonald's fans, fast food chain throwing in extra fries. If you make a purchase on Fridays, it's Free Fries Friday deal. We'll run through June 28th to get the free treat. You have to make at least a $1 purchase through the McDonald's app. The deal involves medium-sized fries, one order per customer. It's only available at participating McDonald's locations. Oh, McDonald's does have some good fries. One of the best things about the place, 512 right now, 65 degrees. Still ahead, a Hollywood comedian is trying to make you feel better about your kitchen skills in a brand new web series. And up next, more on how Uber is getting ready to use face rec detection technology to make sure drivers wear masks.
We find ourselves in challenging times. And if you're taking Skyrizi for moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, financial assistance may be available to help you afford your medication. Skyrizi may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. If you can't afford your medicine, AbbVie may be able to help. Hey, friends. I got up, I put makeup on. I have jeans on. Who is she? Family friends. Sometimes you modify a recipe and it's so good, your girl is still losing. Join now, pay later. Get your first three months free. Sometimes the challenges of today's world make it tough to take care of yourself. That's why you can rely on Nature's Bounty to give you the support you need to stay motivated, keep active, and sleep well. Add a little more health to your day with Nature's Bounty. Welcome back. Uber will soon use facial detection technology to ensure drivers are actually wearing masks. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in your Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Uber will enforce its new driver face mask requirement with face detection technology. Before a driver can accept a ride, he or she must take a selfie while wearing the mask. If the technology detects no mask, then the driver won't be allowed to proceed with the ride. More people will have a chance to get grocery deliveries through Amazon. The retail giant established a waiting list for new Amazon Fresh and Whole Foods customers a month ago in order to manage demand. Amazon says they have increased capacity, so the waiting list has been removed. And instant access comes to Zipcar. The car sharing service will now allow new customers to access vehicles within minutes of signing up instead of days. All you need is your driver's license and a selfie to confirm your identity. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Just now waking up, it's a mess out there on the roads, especially here in the city. Yeah, I've gotten several alerts from you, Nick. It looks busy. Yeah, it's very, very busy right now. Got an update on that accident here at Nagalitos in 35. It's not affecting traffic too bad, but it is there. I have some transguide footage of that. Still working on this accident, eastbound North Loop 1604 at Blanco Road. This accident here, westbound Southeast Loop 410 at IH 35 South. It's right there near Traders Village uh, is what I'm getting, so just be careful. You can see it's already causing a very bad traffic build up there all the way back to uh, Palo Alto, so uh, keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Uh, this accident, westbound North Loop 410 at IH 35 North, which that can get confusing, that's um, near Cowboys Dance Hall over there, and this accident, southbound U.S. Highway 151 at North Hunt Lane. Here's some transguide footage of the accident on 35 in Nagalitos there, uh, right there near that center median. Just be careful if you're heading that way, please uh, control your speed. Roadways are very slick. Let's take a look at other parts of the city. Now 10 in La Quintera, same. Uh, now you can't even see the camera there. I guess it's so rained out. That's at Ralph and 10, uh, Ralph Fair and 10, 10 at Bar Bernie Stage, same. It's probably gonna give me another 10. No, 35 in Lexington. Man, you can see the reflection there. Mike, how long is we gonna have this weather for? It's going to be sticking around for the next uh, couple of hours. And one thing to emphasize, we don't have any anything severe. No high winds or hail associated with these storms moving through. Just heavy, heavy rain and a lot right on cue. A lot of lightning with this as well. And this continues to work its way off to the east. So folks uh, in anywhere east of San Antonio, obviously you're starting to see some of this heavier rain throughout a good portion of uh, Camel, Guadalupe, as well as Wilson counties. And it has moved on through. We're starting to see a couple of breaks maybe here and there, but this will last for at least about the next hour or so. And yeah, it has just been coming down in buckets. And that's been the problem with rainfall rates of about uh, anywhere from two to three inches per hour. It doesn't mean you'll get that much rain. However, some of the radar estimates and this is the six hour estimate and I only did use this one so we could get uh, some of the heavier amounts out here in portions of Medina County, but all of these numbers right in and around San Antonio, this all came within an hour. So just, you know, an inch, seven tenths of an inch doesn't seem like a lot, but this fell in less than an hour. So that's why we're seeing a lot of pounding on the roads, a lot of runoff, 
you know, rooster tails getting kicked up, water flowing over the road. It again, a bucket got dumped on us basically. So out there at the airport at last check, just up until five o'clock, uh, picked up just shy of uh, about a third of an inch of rain. But again, that was the reading up to five o'clock and it's still been raining out there. So we do still have the flood advisory for Bear County up until eight o'clock this morning, Medina and the eastern third of Uvalde County up until seven o'clock this morning. Wouldn't be surprised folks off to the east Guadalupe Wilson County if there's any sort of a flood advisory that gets issued for you folks just because these continue to move on through. And even though the storms appear to be kind of easing up a little bit, it's still dumping a whole bunch of rain. 65 in town, Balverde 70 in New Braunfels. The we we're about 70 earlier this morning. Storms moved through rain cooled air, knocked temperatures down. So these storms were born out there in the western hill country. And as you can see, which they sometimes do, they turn in these nighttime storm complexes with the 25 cent name and it decided to work its way on through. Now this will start to die down once the sun comes up as they usually do. But again, this is going to continue to work its way to the east with some pretty hefty downpours around here. Computer models, we might have a couple of scattered showers around today few and far between. We'll get up to about 90 tomorrow. A little bit better chance for a few scattered showers. Then tomorrow night, this is what the concern is. There's going to be this line of heavy showers and thunderstorms moving through the area and in through Saturday. And this is early morning Saturday, and this will continue on through about midday on Saturday. And then there also is the chance for some of these storms to be severe with high winds and hail primarily. And this is going to be late tomorrow night, so it does include San Antonio, the 35 I-35 corridor and then that gets bumped up into the hill country to a slight risk for severe weather. And that's going to be again late tomorrow night associated with those storms. But I think the biggest threat with that is going to be the the amount of rain that we get from and the potential for flooding on Saturday 80 today at noon. Most of the cloudy skies. This storm cluster is going to continue to work its way off to the east, so it'll be affecting San Antonio for probably I guess about the next hour, hour and a half. 88 uh, this afternoon, mostly cloudy skies, a couple of showers, a few thunderstorms. Then we're going to be getting up to uh, only 85 tomorrow. More thunderstorms are going to be developing late in the day, especially tomorrow, and then heavy, heavy rain into Saturday. Sunday, it'll start to taper off a little bit and we'll stay in the mid 80s. Whole lot more coming up. Stick around. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> 521, 65 degrees. Still ahead, a movie that's had at least four previous release dates now has another theatrical release date. More when the new Mutants movie is expected to come out this time. If the lockdowns made you feel bad about your less than awesome cooking skills, you're not alone. And chances are you're better than at least one comedian. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in your Hollywood Minute. But well, what about healthy foods? Yeah, I don't care about them either. But if you're a parent, you have to pretend to be interested. So let's get cooking. Jim Gaffigan is here to make you feel better about your kitchen skills. His new web series, Let's Get Cooking, features such dubious culinary creations as peas and corn and homemade cookies using store-bought cookie dough. Let's Get Cooking is on Gaffigan's YouTube channel. The reason you survived is because you're a very uncommon girl. This is not a recording. The New Mutants has a new release date. How long have fans been waiting for the thriller? The first trailer dropped in 2017, and it's had at least four previous release dates. Now, the film about teens discovering their powers while being held at a secret facility is slated to hit theaters August 28th. We'll see what happens. Cats is back, not the recent widely derided movie, but the 1998 film of the London stage musical featuring Elaine Page. It's the latest offering on the YouTube channel, The Shows Must Go On, featuring a different Andrew Lloyd Webber show each weekend, streaming free for 48 hours each. The Jellicle Ball begins Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I saw Cats as a teenager in D.C. I still don't know what I saw, even now. I saw it once, too, and I have to agree with you. It's one of those things where the costumes are pretty fun to watch, but it's really bizarre. I'm, I'm still confused, but that's pretty easy to do for me. 526 right now, 65 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, a doctor and whistleblower set to testify today that the U.S. still faces a grave threat from COVID-19. We have reaction from the Trump administration. Plus the Fed warning that additional measures will likely be needed to support the economy in the mid the pandemic. We'll have the latest predictions on how it will affect unemployment rates. 
And there's a battle brewing in Texas over mail-in ballots for the upcoming elections. What you need to know about how they work in our state. Good morning. If you are experiencing lightning, thunder and heavy rain right now, we know about it and it's a big deal this morning on your Thursday, May 14th. And it's going to stick around for a little bit. Mike's joining us with details on that. What time do you think it'll clear out? Well, it's starting to in places break up a little bit in and around San Antonio, but uh, we'll still be around for at least the next hour and it continues to work its way off to the east and folks uh, to the east of town. Now you're starting to see some of this, but um, a lot of lightning and we've been seeing a few lightning strikes here on live cam looking off to the west over there by the airport. The, but the biggest problem has been, and by the way, there's nothing severe with these storms. No hail, no high winds. There were a couple of uh, severe storm warnings issued earlier this morning over there around Uvalde County, but those were actually canceled before they were ever allowed to expire. But the big problem has been, I mean, it's been coming down in buckets around here. And as you can see, the heart of this and most of the lightning strikes are now in Seguin, Floresville, working way off to the east. Nixon, get ready. Same thing with Gonzalez. But we still have a couple of uh, heavier downpours. I mean, right here along 281, it's coming down in buckets and same thing on the southwest side by Von Orme. And like I said, off to the east, you are getting it right now. And I wouldn't be surprised, haven't seen anything, but I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there's some flood advisories that are going to be issued for perhaps Guadalupe or even Wilson County. Nothing as of yet. Flood advisory for Bear County up until 8 o'clock this morning and for Medina County just for the next hour and a half. Same thing with the eastern parts of Uvalde County up until 7 o'clock this morning. The problem has been we've picked up, by the way, molds on the high side. Uh, some radar estimates about an inch, inch and a half, two inches of rain right in downtown. And a lot of that fell in about maybe 45 minutes. So that's why starting to see a lot of runoff. There's a lot of low water crossings that are flooding over this morning as well. Some ponding on the roads. This is going to continue to move on out. We'll have just mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. A little bit of sunshine thrown in 90 for a high temperature. A stray shower off to the east is possible, but then it's tomorrow night and Saturday. That is the next big concern for flooding. Details coming up. Time saver traffic. Here is Officer Nick Salee. Still a bunch of accidents out there, Nick. Yeah, a lot of accidents. As Mike talks about flooding, we got a lot of low water crossings. I've already seen a report of a low water crossing on US Highway 281 at St. Mary's on the main lanes there. I also know we have some here downtown, and it looks like we have some near I-10 and Hebner, some low water crossing there. Also, I know a lot of times when you're going down North New Braunfels at Breeze Boulevard, that area floods very quick. Please turn around, don't drown, and be very careful when heading to work this morning. All right, accident-wise, westbound Southeast Loop 410 at Morrison Boulevard. This one just came out. Looks like it's on the access road. I don't think it's going to cause too much traffic build up there. Still working here, southbound I-35 South at Nagalitos. There's another high water crossing there. Uh, we have a uh, major accident eastbound North Loop 1604 West at Blanco Road. Hopefully this one should be getting cleared up pretty soon. It was a one-vehicle accident. This accident, westbound Southeast Loop 410 at I-35 over there near Traders Village. Um, the, I remember before, the, it was all the way backed up to Palo Alto. Now it looks like it's clearing up as well. Good news. Working on this one, westbound Northeast Loop 410 and I-35 North. That one should be getting cleared up pre pre here pretty soon. And southbound US 151 at North Hunt Lane. This one's been there for a little while now. Well, I'll keep you updated and advised. Please be very careful this morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Nick, thank you so much. A developing story, a disturbance involving a gun has led to a three and a half hour standoff at a home on the east side. Our Katrina Weber is at the scene now. She joins us with the latest. Well, so far, we haven't had any official word from police. They've been here working behind this tape. We did see SWAT officers arrive a little while ago. They seem to be working at a house a few doors down here in the 4000 block of uh, Summer Creek. Now, we did talk to a neighbor. He says he heard gunshots around one o'clock this morning. About an hour later, he looked outside and noticed all the police out here. He said he could hear them over the loudspeaker calling for someone to come out of the house. He believes it's about three doors down from his. Uh, he says he also overheard talk about a 14 year old who possibly was inside the house at one point. But again, we are waiting for police to give us an official word on what is going on here in this apparent standoff that has been going on now for several hours. As soon as we have more information, we will bring that to you. Reporting from the far northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you very much. An ousted federal official will be front and center today testifying before Congress about the coronavirus response. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, he's got a bleak warning for the remainder of the year and possibly beyond. 
Dr. Rick Bright is giving fair warning. Without more action, the year 2020 will be the darkest winter in modern history. Bright, who filed a whistleblower complaint, is testifying before the House Committee on Energy and Commerce's Health Subcommittee Thursday. According to his prepared testimony obtained by CNN, he'll say the U.S. will face unprecedented illness and fatalities unless more preparations are made. We don't have a test that is widely available, that is fast, and that is reliably accurate. Bright will also say the Trump administration was not properly prepared for the COVID-19 pandemic. President Trump dismisses Bright as someone with a grudge. To me, he's a disgruntled guy, and I hadn't heard great things about him. Bright was the head of the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. He says he was removed because he wouldn't promote widespread use of a drug President Trump was touting as a possible treatment for COVID-19. I am not disgruntled. I am frustrated at a lack of leadership. An HHS spokesperson said it strongly disagrees with Bright's allegations. President Trump, unlike Bright, has an optimistic view of the future, especially the economy. I think we're going to have a tremendous fourth quarter. I think we're going to have a transitional third quarter. And I think we're going to have a phenomenal next year. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Federal agents have reportedly seized the cell phone of a U.S. Senator from North Carolina. The L.A. Times reports the FBI took Senator Richard Burr's phone. He leads the Senate Intelligence Committee. Investigators are looking at a stock transactions Burr made back in February. The North Carolina Republican sold up to $1.7 million worth of stock. Federal investigators want to know if he sold the stocks based on the information he received from closed-door briefings about the coronavirus. He has denied any wrongdoing. Well, Tyson Foods says it is cutting prices in some of its meat products, but it's only for the rest of this week. From now until Saturday, the company says it will discount its meats by 20 to 30 percent. That includes chuck and round roast, as well as some ground beef products. The discount comes as reports show prices at grocery stores across the U.S. are rising. The cost of groceries overall increased by more than 2.5 percent last month. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says that was the biggest increase for one month to the next since 1974. 536, 65 degrees. Still ahead, more on the latest battle brewing in Texas over our upcoming elections and specifically mail-in ballots. And up next, Labor Department expected to put out another bleak unemployment report later this morning. We have more on that and what the Federal Reserve is saying about the current state of our economy. And live cam giving us a look outside. Please be careful as you head out. Several accidents already this morning because we have wet roads to deal with. Five thirty nine. Now to the latest on the economy. There's a new warning about the number of Americans losing their jobs. ABC's Inez Laquetera has the latest. This morning, the Labor Department expected to report another two and a half million Americans applied for unemployment benefits in the last week, bringing the total number to more than 35 million losing their jobs since the coronavirus pandemic. There's a risk of destroying the U.S. economy. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin on Fox News last night raising concern about waiting too long to reopen the economy. I hope that all these governors care about the American workers, care about American jobs. It comes as the Federal Reserve warns additional measures will likely be needed to support the economy. Chairman Jerome Powell revealing this staggering figure. Among U.S. households making $40,000 a year or less, nearly 40 percent have now lost a job. Goldman Sachs now predicts the employment rate could hit 25 percent. House Democrats are pushing for another massive stimulus bill, but Secretary Mnuchin says not yet. We just got ready to spend three trillion dollars. Most of that money is not yet in the economy. So the president, I think, let's have this money in the economy. Let's take the next 30 days and think carefully. And this morning, changes at the gas station. Prices have been falling for months, but a new survey finds with more Americans hitting the roads, prices are finally on the rebound. Inez de la Quintera, ABC News, Washington. 540, 65 degrees. Up next, what you need to know when it comes to mail-in ballots during the upcoming elections in Texas. Welcome back to GMSA 543. There's a battle brewing in Texas over our upcoming elections and how they'll be conducted. Today, the Bear County Commissioner's Court will be discussing mail-in ballots. We spoke to two elections experts who currently qualify for voting by mail under Texas election code and why this is an issue you should be keeping an eye on. <laughs> There are five states in the U.S. that primarily vote by mail. 
Several other states allow voters to mail in ballots without giving an excuse. But here in Texas? Well, technically anybody's eligible. However, there are all sorts of stipulations that come into play. It's not an easy task to do absentee balloting in the state. Texas is uh, one of the few states that does require an excuse to, uh, to uh, explain why you are voting by mail. This is the list of reasons you can give for needing a mail-in ballot in the state. It includes being disabled, being out of the county, or being older than 65. It does not account for the unprecedented situation we currently find ourselves in. Never before have Americans been asked to vote and to put their life in risk. In a time when we're all being asked to keep our distance, some are worried about having to physically cast a ballot. And many civil rights organizations and political scientists are worried about the impact this will have on voter turnout. It impacts everything in your life. Um, I mean, the old joke that, you know, uh, you may want to ignore politics, but politics is not going to ignore you. Um, you're paying for this stuff. Uh, I mean, it, it's pocketbook issues as much as anything else. And it also sends a very important message to those in government that we as citizens are keeping an eye on their, on their job performance. On April 7th, Wisconsin's decision to hold in-person elections in the middle of a pandemic was criticized by health experts across the country. I felt embarrassed for the people running that election. That did not need to happen. More than a dozen people who said they voted in person or worked the polls later tested positive. And while several of those people said they could have been exposed somewhere else, it's still a risk many don't want to take. It's why a lot of people are trying to expand mail-in voting in the state. So why is there such pushback? The other side of the argument is that it's going to be rife with corruption. How can you possibly trust the U.S. Postal Service to do this? Look how they deliver the mail now. Some have cited concerns about voter fraud, including Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. On May 1st, he sent out a letter to local elections officials saying that voters cannot legally ask for a mail-in ballot because they fear contracting the new coronavirus. He said that expanding mail-in ballots will, quote, only undermine the security of our elections and facilitate fraud, end quote. The cases of fraud and, and manipulation are so low that they're negligible. Cheating the system via mail-in ballots is the worst way or the most inefficient way of, of hacking an election. Uh, it would take so much work where there's other easier ways to hack an election. Both of the political scientists we talked to say the focus should be to get rid of hurdles in the way of citizens exercising their right to vote. We should be encouraging people to vote. Yeah, be informed, but encourage them to vote. Putting barriers up is not something we want to do. There's no reason why we should make Americans risk their lives to cast them a ballot. To see more stories like this one, watch KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. New study says cats can infect other cats with the coronavirus, but may not show symptoms. Researchers from University of Wisconsin and University of Tokyo purposefully infected three cats. They found all of them were shedding the virus after three days. The team then housed the infected cats with healthy ones, and they came down with the virus too. Researchers say there's no evidence cats can transmit the virus to humans. Gulping down even one sugary drink could put you at risk for cardiovascular disease. Researchers interviewed more than 100,000 women over the course of two decades, and they found that drinking one or more servings of a sugary drink was associated with a nearly 20% greater likelihood of having cardiovascular disease. And some drinks are worse than others. Those who drank flavored fruity drinks with sugar on a daily basis had a 42% greater likelihood of cardiovascular disease. Frequent soda drinkers had a 23% greater likelihood. 5.47, it's time to get an update from our traffic and weather experts. I know, it's been busy. It has definitely been busy, but it is slowing down accident-wise right now. Only working on one accident, but still, what I wanted to tell you out here is we have a high water crossing on the main lanes of northbound 281. It's coming in as the two lanes, number one and two lane, the most farthest left lanes are flooded. We got four uh, units there right now. Just keep that in mind. It's right there in between Josephine and North St. Mary's. Um, we have the trans guide camera of North St. Mary's. We can't find it, so it must be right behind it at Josephine Street. Keep that in mind if you are heading that direction.
Union. This accident westbound southeast loop 410. The access road at Morrison Boulevard uh, looks like a vehicle is on its side there and uh, it's been there for about 15 minutes now. Hopefully we can get it up cleared soon. Drive times. If you're coming from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, you got a 13 minute commute and continuing on from there uh, to 1604 to downtown 13 minutes as well. So still not too bad. Taking a look outside of the trans guide. Very wet out there. Please be careful. Get to work safely. Watch that speed. Turn around. Don't drown and wear your seatbelt. A lot of traffic out there. Yeah, a lot of uh, low water crossings, as you're talking yeah. about there, are now starting to flood over. We've gotten a lot of reports of that around the city. And again, the problem has been, it's not the amount, but it just all came at once. Right. R right. And folks now to southeast of San Antonio yeah. are under the gun. Right. And we haven't seen any more uh, advisories, though, posted. Nothing uh, new off to the south and east. So the storms are starting to ease up as far as uh, the really, really heavy. I mean, still packing a punch, obviously. And look up there around uh, Blanco County. Got some uh, very heavy rain there. So we're starting to see the tail end of it work its way into Bear County. And that's going to continue to work its way across. Uh, to the east and we're not seeing as many lightning strikes being detected in and around town as well. A couple of up there on the northeast side, but then again now down around Wilson County, you folks are getting uh, pretty heavy just to the east of Floresville, some heavier downpours, but not as intense, not as heavy as what it was as that was moving on through San Antonio, but up there to the north. And this is a problem because up around Bernie as well as uh, Canyon Lake area, you got all that rain a couple of days ago. So this is going to add to that. So low water crossings around this area are probably going to definitely be an issue. And we are talking about rainfall amounts number wise inch, inch and a half, uh, in some cases close to two inches, but this all and these are radar estimates and there are some spots that were even heavier than that right around downtown. This all came in basically a half hour, 45 minutes or so. So it was just buckets of rain getting dumped. And so that's why we are seeing some of those problems in the low water crossings. The flood advisory for Bear County is in effect up until 8 o'clock this morning. And for Medina County and the eastern third of Uvalde County, that's in effect up until 7 o'clock this morning. So we still have another couple of hours to deal with uh, some of this issue. And we're still going to be dealing with some runoff too. And it's being added too, even though it's not as intense. Obviously, it's still raining out there. Temperatures are in the uh, mid to low 60 right now. A lot of rain cool there. We had dropped down about five degrees when these heavy storms moved on through late yesterday or yesterday. We were talking about how there was the chance for those storms to develop out to the west, which they did. And we're talking about how there's the chance that some of those could hold together and turn into these nighttime complexes, which two of them did and worked its way across the area. And this was producing some severe weather, some hail in northern Uvalde County earlier this morning, but it has continued to weaken ever since then. So we don't have anything severe winds or hail, but obviously the very heavy rain with it and that will continue to work its way off to the east. It will probably start to die down as the sun comes up as these usually do and then maybe a couple of scattered showers throughout the rest of today. Tomorrow, I think we might have a little bit better chance for a couple of scattered showers around here. Then tomorrow evening is when things really start to get going out there to the west. And this line of rain is going to continue to form up. And this is where the concern is tomorrow night, late into early Saturday morning for some very heavy rain around here and more flooding. Plus, the ground is going to be pretty saturated from a couple of days ago and today. So that's going to be the issue on Saturday and through mainly the first half of the day. Morning hours up through about to probably mid afternoon. There's also going to be the risk for some severe weather associated with that late tomorrow night and early Saturday, primarily out to the west where there's the slight risk. And then that is a marginal risk along the I-35 corridor, including uh, the San Antonio metro area. Now, with going into the future as far as rain, once again, we have these showers and thunderstorms developing. Those will continue to work their way on out of here by probably late Saturday. Sunday, I think we may still have a stray shower or two left over, but uh, the brunt of it is going to be hitting overnight Friday into the first half of the day Saturday. So we'll have rain around this morning and then mostly cloudy skies at noon 80 southeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour and 90 for a high temperature today. Mostly cloudy skies, meaning a little bit of sunshine thrown on in there, kind of warm and steamy and a couple of stray showers primarily off to the east, but not very likely tomorrow. We'll have a couple of showers around the area and then 85 for a high temperature. And I think the clouds are going to continue to increase. And then those heavy showers and thunderstorms are going to move in tomorrow night into Saturday. Like I said, Saturday, that's the big concern for heavy rain and flooding. And then it'll start to taper off a little bit going into Sunday. All right. Early Saturday morning, you were yeah. saying. In the overnight hours, I think uh, Sarah Spivey is going to be busy Saturday morning. Yes, okay. she is. But you guys have it covered. Yep.
Thank you so much, Mike. Right now we're at 553, 65 degrees out of San Antonio International Airport. More on how one restaurant is maintaining social distancing rules in a very unique way. With mannequins or blow-up dolls? Yeah, this is totally bizarre. Yeah, it's creepy. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three numbers, 708, Fireball 9. Your daily four numbers, 3069, Fireball 5. And your cash five numbers, 9, 10, 16, 22, 26, Lotto 8, 15, 16, 21, 39, 54. Powerball numbers, 39, 53, 54, 56, 57. What? 20 was the Powerball with a power play of three. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, President Trump is pushing back on Dr. Fauci's warning about reopening the country too fast, urging schools to return. And then the CDC is set to warn doctors to be on the lookout for that dangerous inflammatory syndrome that has been found in some children. We're going to have the latest on both of those things right here on GMA. South Carolina restaurant has a unique way to ensure social distancing inside. Now that dine in service is available at open hearth for the first time since March, the owners wanted to make sure they look as full as they can. So they ordered a bunch of uh, blow up dolls and dressed them up as patrons. The owners say they're following social distancing guidelines by using the dolls to space out customers. And they are also using disposable menus. Yeah, nothing weird about that at all. Right now it is 5.57, still ahead on GMSA. Coronavirus can make education almost impossible for some students. We'll check out some ways to help kids with learning disabilities learn from home. The bulk of the storms has now moved through San Antonio, but we're still dealing with uh, some water on the roadways right now, quite a bit of it in some places, and we've also had a number of accidents. I expect we'll see a few more here in the next few minutes. Officer Nick Solis will get you updated, and we'll check back in with Mike Osterhage. The city is opening up two more free COVID-19 testing sites today. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. In just a bit, we'll let you know where those testing sites are located. Well, Mike says they're not severe, but look at radar right now. We've had some big time showers and thunderstorms move through dumping a ton of rainfall. He'll have an update. And taking you outside with live cam. As you can imagine, when we have rain like this, it causes problems in the traffic department as well. So Officer Nick at least very busy. He's got a lot of accidents to talk about. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It's Thursday, May 14th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Let's get right to Mike and talk about these storms that we're seeing this morning. Boy, it's been coming down fast and furious at some parts. Yeah, yeah that's been the, the problem. And we're looking off to the east right now. And as you can see, uh, we're not <laughs> seeing as much rain out there at the airport right now. And a lot of these uh, storms earlier this morning, they were really packing more of a punch. There were some severe storms uh, when it moved through Uvalde County. That was about uh, 3 o'clock or so this morning. And they continued to kind of taper off as far as the high winds and hail, but obviously dumping a whole bunch of rain. And that was the big problem is it all basically came at once. So most of the rain is out of San Antonio. Obviously, we're on the kind of the tail end of it. We're working its way on through Wilson, uh, Guadalupe counties, and then especially you got to watch it around uh, Camal County. So there's probably going to be a bit more flooding up there around uh, uh, Canyon Lake because you had all that rain the other day. The ground is very, very saturated, and this is going to be a problem also kind of jumping ahead as we go into Saturday. We'll talk more about that in a moment. So everything continues to work its way off to the east. Still a few uh, decent downpours here and there uh, in the east side of San Antonio and then off around Nixon Gonzalez. Get ready because you're going to be seeing some of these showers. But again, the overall trend is for this to continue to weaken as these types of storms usually do. The ones that kind of are born late in the afternoon and then run all night long. And then as the sun starts to come up, they start to die down just a little bit. Still have flood advisory in effect for most all of Bear County up until eight o'clock this morning for Medina and Eastern Uvalde County up until seven o'clock this morning. And mold is on the high side. Now, as far as temperatures, we uh, did get some rain cooled air in here. I think we'll be right around upper 60s, close to 70 this morning. The showers will continue to work their way off to the east, and then we will see a little bit of sunshine mixed in. I think a few more clouds hanging around today, 80 at noon, and then we'll make it up to a high temperature today, right around 90. A stray shower is possible 
you know, one or two of them off to the east. That's going to be about it. As I was talking about, Saturday is going to be a big concern late tomorrow night and Saturday. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. You know, we have seen inch, inch and a half, two inches of rain right in downtown. All came basically all at once, and there's the, pro the and, result, right? Yeah, I definitely. That's something, sometimes that's all it takes is two inches to move your vehicle. So if you are in a low water crossing or even see one to two inches of water, turn around, that, that could still move your car. So we have a lot of low water crossings downtown, the lower level. If you're going northbound and southbound 35, keep that in mind. If you are heading in that direction, we have this low water crossing here, 10 at UTSA as well. We have this accident we've been working on northbound US Highway 281 North at Hunt Lane. This is involving an 18 wheeler causing a little bit of traffic build up there all the way to Petrenko. So that one probably going to be there a little while. Another high water crossing they've been working on for about 30 minutes. SAPD is on scene four units there. It's in between Josephine and North St. Mary Street um, on the northbound lane says a high water is blocking the left two lanes. Just keep that in mind if you are heading that direction. This accident westbound southeast loop 410 at Morrison Boulevard. I think another one, another accident involving an 18 wheeler, but on the access road, so it's not really backing up traffic too bad. Taking a look at some drive times eastbound 151 to 1604 to 90, 10 minutes. And if you're on 90 eastbound to 1604 to 35, 12 minutes. So still really good times. Traffic is not that bad right now. Taking a look outside, there's 151 and 410. A camera shaking there. Things are still wet all around 90 Medeo Creek. They still got some construction there. The usual construction hopefully gets cleared up pretty soon. And uh, 35 and 1604, not looking bad at all. Please get to work safely, everyone. Watch your speed, put your seatbelt on, and turn around, don't drown. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Police are at the scene of a standoff in the 4,000 block of Sunrise Creek. Katrina Weber gives us the latest on that story. Well, since our last report, police have been making periodic announcements. In fact, you can hear them in the background. They're calling for someone named Ricardo to come out peacefully. Uh, they say that they have the house surrounded and that he should come out immediately with his hands up. So far, we haven't seen any movement from this house here in the 4000 block of Sunrise Creek. A neighbor told us this has been going on for several hours now. He says he heard gunshots around one o'clock this morning. And then after that, he did notice the police here in the street. He's been hearing an announcements like this as well. He says he overheard police talking about a 14 year old who was inside the house at one point. Again, we're still waiting for police to give us any information here at the scene to update us on what led to this whole thing. But it does appear to be a standoff. And again, we'll let you hear in the background police talking to someone inside the house. Well, that's the kind of announcement they've been making for the better part of a half hour. So we are waiting to see exactly what happens and hopefully get an update from police here. Reporting from the far northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, fire officials investigating a fire in a northeast side mobile home park. They say Bear County and Windcrest firefighters responded to a trailer engulfed in flames around 1030 last night. Happened to the 4600 block of Walsham at the Jasper mobile home park. The trailer burned down and they don't believe anyone was living there at the time. Investigators are now looking into a cause of that fire. One woman is in police custody. Another is in the hospital after a knife fight. San Antonio police say two women in their 40s were arguing. This was at a home in the 200 block of Dixon around 930 last night. That's near Southwest Military in South Flores. They say one of the women pulled out a knife and stabbed the other in the chest. Police say the victim did not have life threatening injuries and they have not announced any charges at this time. San Antonio police investigate if a man got hit by a car on the northwest side. They say it could have happened in the 800 block of Babcock around 1130 last night. They say the man called police from his house on Guadalupe Street saying he was hit by a car. However, he does not remember how it happened. The man was taken to the hospital for obvious head injuries. Police do not have a suspect at this time. A man accused of sexually assaulting his daughter and niece has been arrested. The 60 year old Elko Lozano, according to Sheriff's police officers, is the person of interest. He was arrested yesterday evening. The arrest affidavit says the niece and daughter told police about Lozano's behavior when the two were younger. They say he sexually assaulted them from 2001 to 2005 when they were between four and eight years old. Lozano is now facing several charges, including aggravated sexual assault. Department of Public Safety still searching for a missing girl. Officials sent out an Amber alert last night for 14 year old Willow. Willow Searmans, 
That is her on the left side of the screen. They say she was last seen in Grand Saline about an hour east of Dallas. Officials say they believe 21 year old Austin Walker took her picture on the right side of the screen. They say he has a tattoo on each arm and a scar on his right arm. They say he's driving a white Toyota Camry license plate LGH 9294. If you see Willow Walker, call police immediately. South Sand ISD Board of Trustees named their lone finalist for superintendent. Dr. Mark Puig is the finalist. He's currently the superintendent of schools for Beeville ISD. Dr. Puig would replace inter current interim super Dolores Sendejo, who has been at South Sand ISD since July of 2019. Well, more free walk-up COVID-19 testing sites are opening in the city today. Sarah Costa live from home with where you can find these. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Leslie. You can find these two new sites on the city's south side and the city's southeast side. And the good news is, like you guys said, they are free and you don't need an appointment. The first site is at the south side Lions Community Center and the 3100 block of Hiawatha Street. And the second new free site is at the Claude Black Community Center. That's in the 2800 block of East Commerce. Testing will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. today through Saturday. Now, there is a limit of 150 people that can be tested at each site per day. In addition to these sites, the state agencies have also added more mobile COVID-19 test locations for residents at no cost. These locations do require an appointment, and if you head to ksat.com right now, you can find all that information on the two new testing sites and where you can find the information on the mobile pop-up testing sites as well. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Well, the Texas Education Agency is proposing a new school calendar for the 2021 school year. The DEA says the upcoming school year will likely be disrupted due to the coronavirus, but they want to make sure they prevent as much learning loss as possible. Changes could include an earlier start date and later end date, but breaks throughout the year would be longer. The school year would also have more remote learning and staggered in-person attendance. The proposed calendar would need to be approved by individual school districts. CPS Energy is encouraging people around San Antonio to sign up for their assistance programs. The company says they're not disconnecting service and have eliminated late fees at this time. However, the CEO says now's the time to request help if you need it. The company will still send out statements so you can monitor your monthly usage and the amount due will still need to be paid in the future. For more information, call CPS Energy at 210-353-2222. Well, SAWS is also encouraging people to register for their payment plans. A SAWS official says the utility has seen a 300% increase of San Antonians eligible for disconnections. But there has not been a big demand for the assistance program. He says anyone who has lost their job or had their income reduced can apply. Here's the number to call, 210-704-7297. Call that number to set up your plan. SAWS will not disconnect anyone's service or charge late fees at this time. A former federal worker who worked on a coronavirus vaccine will testify on Capitol Hill today. He claims he was demoted for opposing a drug that President Trump said was a treatment. Meanwhile, the White House hired two new leaders to help find a vaccine. CNN's Camilla Bernal has the latest. A vaccine could be the key to reopening the country, and it's why officials at the White House are doing anything they can to fast forward the process. Operation Warp Speed. The White House's race to find a coronavirus vaccine has just tapped two new leaders to oversee the operation. Monsef Slowy, a former drug company executive and retired four-star Army General Gustav Perna. This as the White House scrambles to stop an outbreak within its walls. A new NYU study finds the rapid test the White House depends on is often giving false negatives, frequently missing cases of the virus. After Vice President Pence's press secretary tested positive, President Trump addressed Pence's choice to keep his distance. For a little while, we'll stay apart because you don't know what happens with this very crazy and horrible disease. This as Dr. Rick Bright, the ALSA director of a key federal office charged with developing medical countermeasures, is set to testify before Congress Thursday that the Trump administration was unprepared to handle the pandemic and is expecting to send out a chilling warning from a prepared statement that reads, quote, without clear planning and implementation of the steps that I and other experts have outlined, 2020 will be the darkest winter in modern American history. 
Now, the World Health Organization is also warning that coronavirus may be here to stay. This virus may become just another endemic virus in our communities, and this virus may never go away. And during his testimony, Rick Bright is expected to also call for a better testing strategy and testing that is available for everyone. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. 613, 65 degrees. Uber is using face recognition technology to help keep people safe. The new tech will, will what they will need to recognize if a driver is wearing a specific piece of protective gear. If you missed the Thunderbirds yesterday, you can still see the flyover above San Antonio. We'll show you some of the best shots and where you can see it all on KSAT.com. And looking outside with live cam, Mother Nature is busy, busy, busy this morning. We need you to be very careful as you head out the door because there are a lot of accidents. Without a doubt, it was a tribute fit for Military City USA. Ah, look at that behind us. If you missed the Air Force Thunderbirds yesterday, you can still see pictures and videos from all around the Alamo City. The pilots flew around San Antonio to honor essential workers as part of the America Strong campaign. And not only did our KSAT photographers capture stunning images, but viewers around the city sent in their own videos. To see them, just head on over to KSAT.com. All you need to do is search for Thunderbirds. Look and, at that. And it was amazing. And some people were watching the, the trailing F-16 thinking that it was maybe the missing man formation. It was not. That was like a chase plane that was uh, getting video and also keeping an eye on the team during their entire maneuver. That's a great little piece of information. That's mm -hmm. right, because they do video them because they want to show them. So That's you have to have that chase here. Absolutely. But it looked like it was another F-16, perhaps another Thunderbird. Thank goodness the weather cooperated. It's not cooperating this morning, and it's causing problems on the roadways. Let's get the latest from Nick and Mike. Nick, first up. Yeah, lots of accidents out there, lots of high, low water crossings uh, we have. First one here, okay, so the two lower levels of 35 northbound and southbound. If you're going southbound at San Pedro, it looks like the left lane is blocked due to high water. And if you're going northbound on Martin on the lower level, same uh, high water is uh, blocking that left lane there. Please be careful when heading that way. All right, another major accident westbound Northwest Loop 410 at Ingram Road. They're near Ingram Mall. It's on the main lanes, not causing any traffic buildup yet. So uh, that's good news. And those westbound lanes, usually on 5 o'clock, or morning traffic don't get too bad anyways. Another high water 10 at UTSA. We have this U uh, major accident northbound US Highway 281 at North Hunt Lane. This is involving an 18 wheeler, but it doesn't seem to be affecting traffic too bad. Uh, high water at northbound US Highway 281 at North St. Mary Street. This is continuing to get a little bit worse. They've now blocked off a second lane. So the, if you go from left to right, the number one lane being the left lane, number two lane and so on, those lanes are blocked. Uh, multiple uh, SAPD units are on scene there. And you can see that it's starting to affect traffic now from North St. Mary's all the way past Josephine Street now with that orange there. All right, still working on this accident westbound Southeast Loop 410 at Morrison Boulevard as well. Now let's take a look outside at the Transguide 90 in Medeo Creek flowing smoothly. 35 in Flores doing good and 35 in San Pedro looking decent. Active morning for Nick. It's also been an active morning for you, sir. Yes, very quickly to add to what you're talking about the Thunderbirds. They also videotape themselves so they can see rates of performance kind of critique Absolutely. critique yeah. and they learn from that post flight critique yeah they're amazing but that I was mean. that was so cool we were at alamo stadium yesterday and the parking lot was just full of people that's yeah. eric clapping they, they, hooting and hollering yeah. and i mean we've all probably seen them before but you can't see it enough right it's a wonderful treat it was, it was fantastic. All right. And uh, yeah, things cleared out nicely in the afternoon because we were worried about those low clouds and that's why it was uh, delayed for a while yesterday and now this morning. Okay, good news is we got a couple of drops on the lens over here and we see some lightning off in the in the background and also that little bit of a break in the clouds right there as the sun is thinking about coming up. Good news is most all of the rain is out of Bear County right now, but as Nick was talking about, we're still dealing with what fell in a matter of maybe half hour, 45 minutes to, to an hour, and that's causing the, all the runoff and some of the, the low water crossings and the ponding on the road. So all this continues to work its way off to the east. These storms have definitely weakened as they've been moving across, but obviously they're still dumping. I mean, there's still some fairly decent downpours around here, and the other place to watch out is up in and around Canyon Lake because you had all of that torrential rain a couple of days ago with those big heavy storms, and so this is obviously adding to it.
and we still have the flood advisory in effect for San Antonio Bear County up until eight o'clock this morning and for Medina and parts of Uvalde County. It's still in effect up until seven o'clock this morning. Like I said, we're now dealing even though the rain's gone. We deal with all the runoff and the leftovers from it. Temperatures are in the 60s. We did cool down about five degrees on average as those uh, heavy storms kind of dump some of that rain cooled air on top of us. And these were born out there in the hill country. Of course, yesterday we were talking about how there was the chance for some of those stronger storms to develop. And then there's always the chance with those when they develop late in the afternoon to just kind of hold together all night long, which is what that storm complex did. But as you can see, as time progresses, it has definitely been weakening. Actually, it did produce uh, some about quarter sized hail that was reported in northern Uvalde County, prompting a severe warning earlier this morning, but there's nothing severe out there right now. Just the advisories. We'll have a couple of scattered showers around throughout the rest of today, mainly off to the east. Uh, just, you know, here and there we had one or two of them yesterday. Then we go into tomorrow. I think perhaps a little bit better chance for a couple of showers around here than especially by tomorrow night. That's when we really got to be on the lookout because late tomorrow evening, this line is going to form out there to the west and that is going to work its way off to the east. And this is where we have the threat for some very heavy rain around here. And of course, not only the amount of rain we get on Saturday, but given the fact that in a lot of places, the ground's already saturated from a couple of days ago as well as today. But this is going to be definitely a flooding threat early Saturday morning and throughout um, probably about midday, at least on Saturday. And then that will move on out. Plus, there is the severe threat. This is going to be late tomorrow night and early Saturday morning out to the hill country. Western parts of our viewing area, we have the slight risk for basically high winds and hail is going to be the biggest threats and then the marginal risk along the I-35 corridor. And that again is going to be late tomorrow night and then into the early, early morning hours of Saturday. So rain continues to work its way off to the east. We'll have mostly cloudy skies at noon and then a high temperature 80 at noon, 90 for a high later on today. So pretty hot and steamy. Couple of stray showers are possible, although not very likely. Tomorrow, a few stray showers throughout the day. Make it up to 85 degrees. I think we'll have more clouds around here to help hold temperatures down a little bit. And then heavy rain moves in here tomorrow night into Saturday, 80 on Saturday. Still a couple of scattered showers or possible Sunday, maybe Monday, but the big day, the big concern is going to be early on Saturday. Early, early Saturday morning, right? Yep. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 623, 65 degrees. Some colleges and universities are planning to stick with online learning in the fall, but others are vowing to reopen campuses. We'll have more in your GMA First Look after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. Online dating? I know people meet that way, but where would I even begin? Open laptop, go to OurTime.com, look for free. It's easy to take a look on Our Time, the fastest growing dating site for people over 50. Where does your almond milk come from? Almond Breeze starts here with our almond trees in our Blue Diamond Orchard in California. My parents' job is to look after them. And it's my job to test the product. The best almonds make the best almond milk. Blue Diamond Almond Breeze. We've come a long, long way together. I have to praise you like I should. In these uncertain times, Stanley Steamer remains your trusted partner in clean. We are prepared and equipped to get your space back to clean and healthy again. If your employees, students, or congregation are at home, now is the perfect time for a deep cleaning from Stanley Steamer. In this morning's GMA First Look, the battle over when to open schools and colleges. What are you seeing that these other academic leaders are not? Well, I don't know that we're seeing anything differently than they are. Uh, I think it's a matter of risk reward. GMA getting an inside look at the University of Arizona in Tucson, which plans to reopen this fall. The school's plan is called Test, Trace, Treat. They've even started to convert this dorm building into an isolation center. Students who are sick will get a room to themselves, food delivered, and treated by telemedicine on their computers. We don't want to have to send them to the, the hospital if they don't need to be. But in California, a different story with some state university campuses there remaining closed through the fall semester. 
Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live interview with Cal State Chancellor Dr. Timothy White. With your GMA First Look, I'm Tom Yamas, ABC News, Tucson. Uber will enforce its new driver face mask requirement with facial detection technology. All right, so listen to this. Before a driver can accept a ride, he or she must take a selfie while wearing the mask. If the technology does not detect a mask, then the driver will not be allowed to proceed with the ride. But can't they, as you said earlier, put a mask on, take the pic? And then take it off. And then take, take it off or lower the mask? Unless there's like a sensor or something that's keeping an eye on them the whole time. I don't understand how. It yeah, we're, we're a little skeptical. Yeah, we are. Your time now 628, and it is 65 degrees. Right now, let's take a look at radar. Those storms are starting to move out of Bear County, but uh, we're seeing some heavy rain still to the east of town and southeast. We'll get an update with Mike coming up, and... And we are checking the roadway. Boy, poor Nick. I felt bad for him today. He's had so many accidents. If you don't have the KSAT apps, you need to download them because you, there's a lot going on. The Texas Attorney General is now asking the Texas Supreme Court to step in over the battle of mail-in ballots. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you how this affects Bear County. And checking radar, boy, my, Mark's been, Mike has been really busy today tracking all of these storms, and Nick is really busy tracking all the accidents. Find out how your day's gonna shape up. And with live cam, you can't see it in this shot, but we've got an amber sky to the east right now as the sun comes up and we see a few breaks in those clouds post storm here in the Alamo City. We'll talk to Mike in a sec. It is Thursday. It is May 14th. Good morning. Are things finally starting to calm down on the roadways? No, we're still having accidents pour in. You know, just uh, right now we're working on one eastbound at WW White Night. All right, thank you, Nick. And there it is right there behind you, Mike. Yeah, a gorgeous sky looking off to the east, and obviously uh, no rain is showing up, but now the problem is it's all the leftovers, all the runoff, and that's why Nick's having to deal with so many uh, accidents out there. And the the big problem was the fact that all of this rain and, you know, just looking at the numbers, they aren't all that impressive, but most of it came in about 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes. It was just coming down in buckets as those storms moved on through. And as you can see, even just in the past couple of hours, how these have definitely settled down. Now, obviously, we still have some uh, lightning strikes here in uh, southern Gonzales County in northern Carnes County. Most of the heavy rain. Now, we've still got a couple of heavier downpours, though. Some of those uh, uh, little spots of some decent downpours and this is where the concern is just because you had all that rain a couple of days ago up around Canyon Lake so you're still getting some on top of that and with the rain that we're seeing this morning then ground's going to be pretty saturated and that's setting the stage then for Saturday. We'll talk more about that in a moment. The uh, flood advisory is still in effect for Bear County up until 8 o'clock this morning and for just the next half hour till 7 o'clock for Medina as well as that one portion of Uvalde County. Mold's on the high side and uh, I would venture a guess it's going to remain high for the next couple of days. And as far as temperatures, we are going to uh, be getting up into the uh, 80 degree range and then right around 90, 80s at noon and 90 later on this afternoon, maybe a stray shower or two. But again, the next big round of heavy rain is going to be coming in here Saturday. More on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now and about how many accidents can you count them? No, I can't count them right now, but at least four or five. Okay. That's, but along that with the low water crossings and, you know, it's making for a very busy day out there on the roadway. But, you know, having said all that, traffic still isn't that bad. If you are heading to work this morning, other than the, the wet roads and driving the speed limit, you shouldn't have a too bad of a, a time going to work. It's still looking pretty good out there, but we just had this accident right now. Eastbound I-10 West at UTSA Boulevard, getting a little orange and starting to back up there to the 16 uh, to 1604. Keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Uh, this high water, we've had this for a little while now. Northbound and southbound lower levels of I-35 at San Pedro and Martin have some lanes blocked off there. Still working here. Westbound Northwest Loop 410 at Ingram Road. That accident is right over Ingram. Uh, Let's see what else we have. Uh, high water northbound US 281 at uh, south at St. Mary's. This has been there for a while. A lot of SAPD units are on scene. The left two lanes are blocked because of high water. Taking a look outside, look at 35 in Flores. Yeah, that's uh, getting very backed up there. Looks like you're going to have a delay if you're heading that way. 10 at UTSA. This is the accident I was talking about. There's 1604 back there. These are the eastbound lanes going towards uh, De Zavala. Keep that in mind if you're heading that way. And let's do one more here. Oh, it's going to stay there. Yes. Oh, 10 West and 1604. Not too bad 
on those lanes. All right, everyone, well, please get to work safely and have a great day. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Late breaking news right now. Firefighters are on the scene of a house fire in the 1900 block of Nolan Street. That's in the neighborhood near Walters and Houston Streets, which is on the east side. Our Katrina Weber just arrived on the scene. So Katrina, what can you tell us? Well, this has been going on since a little before six o'clock and the hard work isn't done yet. Just down the street is where the house is. Uh, we are this far away because of all the hoses they have going on. They have their ladder truck extended. Uh, firefighters did tell me there were at least two homes involved, possibly some others on the backside. They weren't sure just yet, but at least two homes uh, involved in this fire. Let me give you a look at the flames that were coming out of here a little bit earlier. Again, they did get the call before six this morning. There were six people inside uh, the house where this fire started, according to the family. They all got out safely. They, along with their pets, are, are out here now as firefighters continue battling this fire. Uh, we have not heard of any injuries in any of the other homes. But again, they did say at least two homes involved, possibly something on the backside, but they are still checking into that. But again, no injuries to anyone, at least in that original house where this fire started. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton taking his fight over ballots by mail to the Texas Supreme Court. Paxton believes those at risk of contracting COVID-19 are not eligible for absentee voting. Sarah Costa live with how this could impact the Bear County election. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Leslie. Well, Bear County, we have a runoff election in July and, of course, the November elections. And now we have to worry about a battle over the mail-in ballots. This after Attorney General Ken Paxton, he's, 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 he's been fighting Texas voters in counties who have asked the courts to rule that those at high risk of contacting COVID-19 be considered a, a disability, which would allow those voters to use absentee ballots. Paxton argues this does not follow the state laws in place. Texas allows mail-in ballots with strict conditions. You must be 65 or older, disabled or out of the county. It does not account for the unprecedented situation we are currently in. Today, the Bayer County Commissioner's Court will begin discussing mail-in ballots and what legal options they have available as elections near. And of course, we will keep you updated on what comes out of this debacle over mail-in ballots. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. New study found COVID-19 tests being used by the White House frequently misses cases of the virus. The White House uses the Abbott ID now test, which can show results in 13 minutes. But New York University researchers found the test to be, quote, unacceptable for use with patients. They looked at nasal swabs from 101 patients who came in for testing and found that it gave false negatives 48% of the time. The Food and Drug Administration, which authorized testing in March, is investigating. Federal agents have reportedly seized the cell phone of U.S. Senator Richard Burr. Investigators are looking into stock transactions Burr made back in February. The North Carolina Republicans sold nearly $2 million worth of stocks. Federal investigators want to know if he sold the stocks based on information he received from closed-door briefings about the coronavirus. He has denied any wrongdoing. In your morning consumer news, new weekly jobless numbers due out this morning. So experts say that another two and a half million Americans likely filed for first time unemployment claims in the last week. That would bring the total number to around 36 million people since March 21st. That's about a full quarter of the country's working age population. And meanwhile, worries surrounding the economic recovery are sending stocks down. The Dow fell more than 500 points yesterday after the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that more stimulus may be needed from Washington. Powell called the path ahead highly uncertain and subject to significant risks. 640, 65 degrees. The coronavirus can make education almost impossible for some students. After the break, we're going to see some ways to help kids with learning disabilities learn from home. Many, many parents are learning new respect for teachers with most schools closed until fall. Mom and dad have had to step up either through homeschooling or making sure online classes are being done. It's difficult for most, but even more trying and time consuming for students and their parents dealing with learning disabilities. Max Massey has details. 
19-year-old Brian Owens got his freshman year in college interrupted. His studies moved from the classroom to his bedroom. It's just a different mindset. Learning has always been a challenge. Brian has autism and struggles with ADHD, but now finding focus at home may add another level of difficulty. Not having your teachers for one-on-one -on -one instruction um, definitely is a disadvantage. Students with ADHD and dyslexia will have difficulty with time management, while autistic kids may be okay with the online format, but lack organization skills. So a detailed daily schedule is a must and have hourly breaks scheduled. Brian has his plan in place. No, I just set my um, reminder to begin schoolwork at 12 p.m. and I just worked till I get it done. Experts also say parents can help out by making flashcards for visual learners and voice recordings for auditory learners. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Let's check traffic at 644. Yeah, things are looking a little better out there. Still traffic getting light to moderate now, which is normal for this time of the morning. But I found that accident here. It's going to be eastbound IH10 East at WW White Road. This is an accident. It's on the shoulder. Doesn't seem to be uh, building, having, causing traffic buildup that bad, but it is there if you are headed in that direction westbound on I-10. We have this accident still eastbound I-10 West at UTSA Boulevard. It's causing some major uh, traffic buildup there all the way back to 1604 on those eastbound lanes. Working here, this high water um, at 281 and North St. Mary's in between North St. Mary's and Josephine. Been there for a little while. It's still uh, backing traffic all the way up to 35 now. Now let's take a look outside 10 West and 1604 looking good. Here is that accident at 10 and UTSA Boulevard still very active and it looks like a lot of lanes are blocked off. It looks like actually one lane is open there. And um, so just keep that in mind if you are heading that direction. This one does not look well. You see the record driver yeah, when he's starting to uh, scoop up all the debris on the roadway. Usually that's a sign that it's, he's almost ready to take off from the scene and open those lanes up. That'll be nice. Thank you, Nick. Boy, we had a big mess a couple hours ago, but that's now moved off for the most part, right, Mike? Yes, but we're still dealing with the leftovers. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got all the, the problems out there, you know, and there's uh, standing water on the roads because it was just coming down in buckets, a lot of low water crossings, uh, just the, the water flowing across roads. And now, Boy, it's turning out to beautiful, beautiful sunrise right there along the horizon. Obviously, the roads are still wet and there's nothing showing up on radar right now in and around uh, San Antonio Bear County. Still some rain around uh, Seguin, Nixon and further off to the east. And this whole cell has been dying down. We still have a few showers left over around Canyon Lake and heading up in toward San Marcos. Obviously, this is where uh, some of the lion's share of the rain was a couple of days ago. So you're probably dealing with more low water crossing issues there in uh, northern uh, Kamau County. County. As far as rain, again, the big problem was number wise, these numbers weren't off the charts, but all of this came in the course of maybe half hour, 45 minutes. It just dumped down in buckets. That was the situation here in town on the southeast side, about 1.3 inches, half an inch of rain out there at the airport was officially recorded, but again, it was causing some problems out there. And this uh, swath of rain moved through parts of the hill country. Again, inch, inch and a half, two inches, but it all fell basically at once. We still have the uh, flood advisory for Bear County till eight o'clock, seven o'clock for, so just to the next, uh, what, uh, 13 minutes or so for Medina, as well as Eastern Uvalde County. And these storms, of course, were born out there in western parts of the hill country last night and decided to hold together. They turn into these, I call them nighttime storm complexes. They've got the $5 name associated with them. And this is continuing to weaken as the sun uh, comes up. But it did produce some severe weather, some uh, pretty good hail up there in northern New Valley County earlier this morning. So here's the uh, rapid update computer model. And it's got the rain continuing to taper off. Maybe a couple of sprinkly showers. I mean, one or two of them popping up later on today, and that's going to be about it. Now we jump ahead in time up to tomorrow evening. There's going to be a couple of uh, showers around uh, scattered about throughout the day tomorrow, but then we go into tomorrow evening and you watch out to the west and that line of showers and storms is going to form up there, work its way across the hill country into early Saturday morning, and it's going to be really packing a punch as far as some very heavy rain on Saturday, and then it should continue to move on out of here. And there's also going to be the severe threat late tomorrow night, basically western half of our area with a slight risk of severe storms, high winds and hail out in western portions of the hill country, and that'd be tomorrow night. 80 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. And again, the rain moves on out, but we're still going to be dealing with runoff, with 
low water crossings throughout the next few hours. 90 for a high temperature today. A couple of showers are possible, although not very likely. Tomorrow we'll have some scattered rain around the area, and then it's going to start to pick up late tomorrow night. Heavy rain late tomorrow night into Saturday. 80 for a high temperature Saturday. It's going to be a wet day. And then it's just going to be kind of the scattered variety. One or two of them around, I think, on Sunday. And we'll see a bit more sunshine going into next week. Didn't see severe this morning. Could we see severe weather early Saturday morning with this? Line? Yes. Okay. Yes, there is that, that risk with that. But I think the biggest thing we're going to be dealing with is the heavy rain potential. More Plus heavy rain. the fact rain. it's ground saturated now. Yeah, because yes. we had round right. two today, right? Nice for it to run off to. Yep. All right, thank you, Mike. Right now we are at 649, 65 degrees. We've heard a lot about the Asian giant hornet or the murder hornet, but Texas is already dealing with invasive species problems that you may not even know about. Join us tomorrow for GMSA, where we're going to take a look at what animals are causing the most problems in the Lone Star State. News you need to know before you go is coming up as we take another peek outside with live cam on your early Thursday morning. Glad you're with us. We'll be back. The city is opening two more COVID-19 testing sites and they are free. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. These sites can be found on the city's east side and the city's southeast side. You don't need an appointment to get tested at these new COVID-19 testing sites and they are free. The first site is at the Southside Lions Community Center in the 3100 block of Hiawatha Street. And the second new free site is at the Claude Black Community Center on the 2800 block of East Commerce. Testing will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. today through Saturday. Now, there is a limit of 150 people that can be tested at each site. Now, you can find all this information right now on KSAT.com and also information on some new mobile testing sites provided by state agencies. Reporting from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, live on the east side. We're in the 1900 block of Nolan Street, where there has been a huge fire. It's heavily damaged two homes just down the street behind me. I want to give you a look at the video so you can see the flames that firefighters found when they got here. Uh, two homes heavily damaged. The third one on the back side of those also has some damage from exposure. Firefighters just told me that they did have one person who was transported to a hospital. That person, it's unknown if, if that person had burns or smoke inhalation. Six people in the original house where the fire started were uh, able to escape without any injuries, as were their pets. Firefighters still putting out the flames and looking for the cause of this fire. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Just about five minutes till. Let's check on the roadways once again. Hopefully these accidents are getting cleared up. No, we have another major accident. I was trying to find it right now. It's going to be northbound I-10 near Fulton Street. This is a very major accident. If you look at the bottom of your screen there, it's causing major delays there at 35 and 10. Still working at this one, westbound I-10 east at WW White. We have eastbound I-10 west at UTSA Boulevard. And what else we have here? That high water, northbound 281 at North St. Mary's. A lot of accidents out there. Please, everyone, be careful. Watch the roadways. They're slick. Put your seatbelt on and drive that speed limit. Yeah, even though the rain has come to an end in and around town, and as you can see, it's uh, beautiful with that sunrise off in the distance there trying to squeeze through the clouds. We have all the runoff, all the standing water, low water crossings like Nick was talking about. And like I said, the rain continues to move its way off to the east. A couple of lightning strikes well down there to the southeast, and uh, that will eventually die down. We still have the flood advisory for Bear County for the next hour. The advisories for Medina and Uvalde County are going to expire in just about uh, four minutes or so. 80 at noon, 90 for a high temperature, mostly cloudy. A shower two is possible tomorrow. A few showers throughout the day, but tomorrow night and then Saturday. That's when we got to watch out for some very heavy rain around here. Maybe a couple of stronger storms severe, but I think heavy rain is going to be the biggest threat Saturday. OK, Mike, Nick, thanks, guys. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for spending your morning with us. Absolutely. We'll see you back here for GMSA at nine. Good morning, America. Coming up next right here on KSAT 12.